Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this lesson dedicated to emergency plans for cultural heritage institutions. In this section, uh, we will go into the details of the procedures for writing an emergency plan, analyzing in detail all the phases necessary for its elaboration. So the first step for drafting an, an effective safety and emergency plan is the collection of all the documentation already in possession of the museum, archive or library. These documents can serve as a starting point for the creation of a tailor-made path for the institution. The documentation also um, makes it possible to develop an initial rough analysis of the risks that are affecting the collection and to try to test the risk awareness of the personnel. The documents that may be useful for the project are the following. First of all, the health and safety plans. And these documents already contain most of the basic information for the reaction and response procedures in case of emergency and can be used um, as an outline for identifying tasks and responsibility. Um, as well as evacuation plans, thanks to the safety plans, which are uh, by law um, mandatory, it is possible to have a first analysis of the possibilities of reaction to an emergency, thanks to the indication of emergency exits, placement of fire extinguishers and meeting place in case of emergencies and so on. Then another very important uh, document to have in this phase are the catalogues and inventories of the collection. Um, in fact, the drafting of a safety and emergency plan can be an opportunity for the museum to survey the collection. The cataloging, the location of the artworks and their state of conservation are basic information in the drafting phase of an emergency plan. And it can also be the first step to identify the fundamental uh, nucleus of the museum collection and establishing the list of rescue priorities in case of emergency. Another important document is the facility report. Uh, this document is usually produced by the museum only uh, in the loan phase. The facility report serves to certify, let's say, to the lending bodies, the museum's ability to guarantee a certain level of safety to the works lent. However, this document can also be extremely useful in the risk analysis phase um, and, and in the writing phase of an emergency plan, as it already contains a lot of information regarding the risks to which the building is subjected subjected and the collection conservation procedures. So the existence or not of a well detailed uh, facility report also certifies in some way a certain predisposition of the personnel um, to be aware of the risks that can threaten the works in the collection. Um, another important document um, are the detailed uh, building plans, uh, floor plans, with the indication of uh, the safety and security systems. And um, so, for example, the positioning of the fire and intrusion safety system and possibly the positioning of the water and air conditioning systems. An in-depth study of this information makes it possible to identify the uh, weak points of the building already in this pre preliminary phase. 
um, so the, all the, the areas that are more exposed to certain risks because they do not have safety systems, for example, or because, because they may be exposed to breakage and malfunction of electrical and water systems. In this slide, you can see an example of a legal, legally mandated evacuation plan. As you can see from these plans, it is already possible to obtain a lot of useful information for carrying out a first rough analysis um, of the risks, such as, for example, the positioning of fire extinguishers and escape routes. Once the overall situation has been analyzed based on the documents that have been acquired, it will be essential to check the requirements identified in the preliminary phase in the reality of the building um, through an inspection. Uh, the inspection must be extremely detailed and must involve all the premises of the museum. In particular, at this stage, it will be important to es establish some important elements that you can see here. Um, first of all, the correspondence of the situation identified during the analysis of the documentation with the real situation of the structure. The documents analyzed may be, for example, out of, out of date or may refer only to a project idea. So for this reason, it will be essential to check with plans in hand any differences in the arrangement of spaces and the effective positioning of the safety systems and the fire extinguishers. Then it is uh, useful to identify the actual operation procedures of the safety systems indicated in the plan. For this purpose, it will be important to identify, in addition to the correct general operation and frequent maintenance of the systems, also the conditions that can compromise the correct use of the emergency devices. For example, extinguishers, despite being properly maintained, may be positioned in such a way as to make them practically impossible to reach in an emergency. Or, for example, security cameras whose view, even if they are fully functional, may be covered by boxes or artworks that create um, hidden corners and so on. Lastly, it is important to verify the emergency procedures in case of emergency. Um, some issue that can be investigated at this uh, point are, for example, the communication and intervention time of the fire brigade and the rescue service team in the event of a fire. Or, for example, the alarm procedures identified in the event of a fire of or, of, or of an intrusion. Uh, the procedures for switching on the anti-intrusion anti system at the end of the shift, for example, or uh, the existence uh, of a night patrol services and so on. These uh, are some examples of the security systems that might be analyzed uh, during this inspection. Obviously, there are all the um, systems dedicated to the fire risks. So, uh, for example, fire extinguishers, the um, alarm, um, any kind of automatic extinguisher systems. Then there is as well the anti-intrusion system with its alarms, CCTVs, uh, optical sensors, the distributions of keys and badges and so on. Then there is the air conditioning system with uh, also all the microclimatic area of the, of the systems. So the temperature and humidity regulation and control. And lastly, the flood system, anti-flood system. So whether the museum has 
uh, detection systems for flooding or lifting pumps for water. Thank you very much for your attention. We will see you in the next part of this lesson.